So today we are looking at calibrating the ADS-1115 based energy monitor. This is in the feather wing format. Some people have had some issues calibrating it so I decided to record this video to show the steps in uh, calculating the offsets and gains and so on. So here you can see the OLED screen on top, then there is an Adafruit feather in between and the actual energy monitor is at the bottom. I've plugged in the LiPo backup battery there is the uh, USB for data and programming and, and other ancillary stuff. So here is the code. I've set all the calibration parameters to ones and zeros, the zeros for any offsets and ones for any scale parameters. So you can look at the serial plotter which is outputting the values here. You can see the voltage and power, their offset non-zero values and not realistic. So if I do a quick reset of this, let's see a big spike and the voltage will ramp down to a stable value. So you can see the voltage has stabilized somewhat and the power has stabilized as well. There's a blue line here. It's a legend. The blue line here has stabilized something to a negative, negative value. So if we look at the serial monitor, this value for the voltage happens to be around 303 so you can collect a few samples and average it out to see what value you're getting so I'll say for now say 302 303 303 is the operating value so we'll scale the voltage from that value to 200 and 30 volts which is the Australian voltage level and then we'll calibrate the rest of the parameters from then on. So we'll change this VCAL parameter here which is currently 1.0 and we'll reduce it to map to 230 volts and we'll take it from there. So now we have added, added a voltage calibration parameter here using our calculations. It's around 7591 we are aiming to reach 230 volts nominal. You can see the ramp here for the for the voltage curve. It's ramping down to a stable value. So it has stabilized. Let's have a look at what the value is using the serial monitor. So it has reached 228. 230 so we have reached the nominal voltage that we were aiming for so now we need to uh, try and get the power offset calibrated out so let's have another look at the serial, serial plotter so the power is still in the negatives because of the big phase offset which you can see here there's a delay in the conversion between the current and the voltage even though they are done one after the right after the other in single shot mode the ADC is powered down and there is a delay in
now that we have put in our power offset uh, we should be getting nearly zero power at no load that's good the voltage is correct yep so now here comes the fun part we're going to turn on the calibration lamp at 116 watts and see what power we get wow negative 1861 so that's not good it's to be 116 so we'll cal calculate another calibration parameter and also make the current negative so we'll nominate that to be around 1860 for now so we have reduced the current parameter here made the current much smaller and with our minus 15 offset we are getting a different shift now because the current parameter has changed so if we turn on the lamp which you can see by the change in the brightness there our power now is around 100, 102 the shift is 116 which is as expected the scaling is working properly but we need to uh, change our offset at the zero to bring it up to the right value so we'll do that So we'll take the offset from the minus 15 to This may take a few few tries. It's like a uh, Newton Raphson algorithm to get the offset right. So 14 seems to be the value there. So it was minus 15. So let's try one minus one. We'll send that over and check our power parameters again. After the offset is changed, the power offset, this is the final stage. We should have got pretty accurate calibration now. So at zero we are getting almost zero power with everything turned off. So as soon as we turn off the on the lamp, the brightness goes up and we start reading values like 115, 117, 114.3. There's a bit of noise, but it is almost the 116 watts that we are aiming for. You can also see the quite varying phase, so the phase is not calibrated yet, the power factor, but uh, it did shift from zero to something something indicating more resistive load. So we turn that off, and if you, you want to change the sign, you can just flip the sensor, or you can flip the maths here. Then, then you have to calculate your offsets again, so you can do that as well. Uh, uh, so let's give it a test with a different bulb here. I have a different shaped bulb here. So I got a fancy one. And that's rated here at 25 watts. So we'll plug this in and see what the energy motor says. So my calibration parameters are still the same here from before and I have plugged in my fancy shaped bulb mm, which is sort of shaped like a cucumber it, they call them classic filament bulbs uh, and you can see the power reading is coming through here so I turn on the meter and you can see the readings come through here about 
22 watts instead of 25 given the basic setup this is uh, quite accurate for low power values and the uh, phase is shifting but it will end up being around 0.9 from previous experience yeah so it's working at this power level as well enough back to down to zero okay so that's the end of the calibration phase for the power uh, phase calibration will require a bit more experimentation but we are aiming to make the power factor one with a resistive load like this and less with uh, uh, LEDs uh, compact fluorescent or LEDs like LED lamps like this uh, if you look at using the uh, ATM 90 best energy monitor they're much more accurate and require much less hassle in calibrating.